Cool. Go ahead, man. Awesome. Thank you, Travis. Um, hey, guys, what's going on? My name is Aiden. Um, as I mentioned, I'm somewhat of a hot spot enthusiast at this point. Um, I have 34 currently deployed and around 320 more pre-ordered coming in the next couple months. Um, so I founded my company Meshly. We're basically a hotspot deployer. It sounds like a couple other people in this call are doing um, somewhat of a similar thing. And we basically found that we were running Facebook ads, getting hundreds of different leads, and we were struggling to figure out the best way to basically identify which placements are going to work well and earn lots of H&T and provide good coverage to the network and which placements were gonna be duds and earn next to nothing. And we'd end up having to go through and spend the hassle and time of recalling all those hotspots, you know, getting the host who was promised you know, to earn X amount of dollars per month to get them to return them. It's not a fun process for anyone. It's a waste of time. And ultimately our, so our, our goal was to basically figure out how we could kind of systematize this and find a better way to place hotspots and not have to get them back and basically get a better ROI from our hotspots. So I originally um, hired James, who's my lead developer, one of my good friends, to basically help me build this tool. I'm um, fairly technical, but I don't quite have the technical skills to build an entire SaaS application like this. Um, so we basically hired him to build this tool. And I, we were originally just gonna use it internally for all of our hotspots, but I obviously saw an opportunity here and a need in the community. I've seen a thousand people ask, you know, is my location gonna be good? Is it gonna work? Is my location gonna earn you know, decent HNT, provide good coverage, all of that. So we basically decided to build this internally and then decided to basically release it to the public for everyone from the casual, you know, hobbyist hotspot user who has one hotspot to check if their location is basically going to work. Our goal is to keep it for free, basically, for all of those hobbyist users. And then we basically do have some bigger packages meant for people who are placing 10, 20, 50, 1,000 every month. Um, so let's jump into it. So hot, the name is Hotspot RF. Um, so as I mentioned here, basically, Placing hotspots is a very difficult problem. I think in the community, RF data is um, extremely opaque. Most people don't have a good understanding of it. Um, obviously, there's a lot of helium knowledge that you need to have for you know, how well your hotspot's gonna earn, such as like HIP 15, HIP 17, reward scaling. Um, geography also comes into play, obviously. And then of course, antenna placement. Um, so in the past, I don't know about you guys, but I was utilizing things like Google Earth. I would download, you know, a KMZ file of all the existing hotspots, look on Google Earth. I'd be like pivoting around trying to see if there's mountains nearby, if the RF data is going to be able to get around. Um, maybe I'd try to use some kind of like RF modeling tool and kind of model the location and see if maybe it was going to be hitting other hotspots. All of that stuff, it was generally a pretty time consuming process. And we were, I was basically making educated guesses, guesses at best. Um, so that's kind of how this tool was born. Um, so basically the solution was hot for me was hotspot RF. Um, so some of the premium features that we include is basically radio frequency modeling. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys a live demo of the portal here in a second. Um, but basically the core features that we kind of do um, that some of the other tools out there don't is radio frequency modeling. And we do this over all of the other helium hotspot data. Uh, we also can basically um, predict the reward skill that your hotspot will receive at a given location. Um, so it's based on the HIP 17 um, basically algorithm. Um, and then we're also going to be releasing basically a location scoring algorithm. Um, so that will basically give a hotspot a score. Um, obviously, the higher the score, um, the better the basically earning potential and coverage potential is for that location. Um, so some of the free features that we offer are basically very similar to Helium um, Place, if any of you guys have used that. Um, one of the additions to that is that we did add basically the HIP-17 heat map. I believe we're the only tool, I might be wrong, but I believe we're the only tool that has this currently live. I know there's an older one um, from a couple months ago. Basically just shows you basically the reward scaling um, in cities. Uh, we allow you to also visually explore earnings. I'm not sure if any other tools currently do this. I think we also might be the only one, um, but basically you can click on a hotspot and you can see it's 24 and seven day rewards instead of you know looking at it on the Explorer and then having to search up its name and see all of that stuff. We also show you basically the location red zone where your hotspot can't interact in that location. We allow you to overlay all the Uber um, H3 data, basically all those hexes, um, which can be useful in some situations. You're able to search by address and hotspot lookup, and we have five map styling options um, to let you better kind of see and better place your hotspots um, and basically just evaluate the area. Um, we obviously update all the hotspot data daily. I think we're actually about to update that to hourly. Um, it's not too intensive on the APIs. 
let's see here. So the first example, um, I'm using some of the hotspots that I actually own. Um, so here's a nice little picture of it. This hotspot's one of my top performers. It's overlooking basically the SF area. I believe it's in San Leandro. It's on my um, friend's like second floor apartment window. He's got or a balcony. It's got a pretty nice little view. Got the antenna outside, all of that. So here is a screenshot from the Explorer I took yesterday of all of the witnesses that it is currently able to um, get to. So let's go and uh, model this hotspot live in the tool. Abundantly Yeti, we're able to easily search for the hotspot's name. We're gonna pull it up here. It's gonna zoom in. So like I said, it's kind of up on this hill overlooking the SF Bay area. So the settings um, are pretty important in this tool. Um, we did build a pretty in-depth little settings guide here and I'm sure we'll continue adding on it. Before you use the tool, please have a look through the settings. Um, a lot of it's pretty straightforward, like frequency, antenna gain, a lot, I'm sure most of the people on this call are familiar with that stuff. Maybe not as noob friendly to some of the more, a little bit more average users. Um, but the settings are fairly important, um, especially when it comes to height and terrain. So definitely make sure to give those um, two things a read through uh, before modeling any locations. Um, so we're going to go back and model this location. Um, this is pretty much a standard, one of the standard rack antennas. Um, the cable loss, uh, we can put zero or one. It's a, like a six foot run of LMR 400. And then the height was about 15 feet. So for this one, we have a clear line of sight option. Um, as you can see in this picture, this thing has a beautiful line of sight over the surrounding area. So we're going to select the clear line of sight for terrain. And we're going to go ahead and simulate the location. So simulation takes about um, 10 to 20 seconds generally. Um, simulating the RF data is actually quicker than calculating the reward scale. Uh, we're gonna work on trimming that down in the future, um, but it doesn't take too long. It's about 15, 20 seconds. And if we zoom out, we're able to see basically the coverage um, that we should expect from a location like this. Keep in mind, RF is not an exact science. Um, it's never going to be you know, perfect. I don't think there's a tool in the world that can calculate RF perfectly. Um, but we do a pretty good job um, in all of the kind of hotspots that I have live. I've gone and kind of run them through the tool and it does a, it does a really good job of estimating basically how far it should get. Um, so as we can see here, it's able to hit hotspots all along here into the city, kind of along this coastline and down into here. So if we go back and look at this coverage picture and you can see that that coverage data lines up pretty accurately with where the RF um, is being calculated to go. Does anyone have any questions about um, anything I've presented so far? That's very nice. Awesome, I appreciate it. Um, I have a couple more examples here. I don't know how long we wanna run with this, how interested people are. I have four examples in kind of different climates in different areas. Um, I can run through all of them or just a couple of them, depends what people wanna see. Go to see. town, please. Awesome, so let's go and model. Um, this is another hotspot I have set up. Um, this one is set up as we can see here. This is in the suburbs. Um, so this uh, host was kind enough to let me put an eight DBI antenna on the top of their house. It's about six, seven feet tall. They already had an existing um, antenna mount, so it was pretty easy to set up. Um, so as we can see here, um, it's able to hit a few hotspots in the Pleasanton area. Um, this is like a pretty average suburbs, a bunch of tall um, trees, two-story houses, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to go back out and we are going to click back to the tool. So like I said, it's an 8 dBi antenna. Um, there is a bit of cable loss. It's like a 20-foot run of LMR 400. I'm going to, I believe off the top of my head, like 4 or 5 or 4. Or four decibels of cable loss and the height was about 20 feet um, on top of that roof. So for this one, as we saw, we're in the suburbs. Uh, so we're going to change the terrain to suburbs and we're going to simulate the location again. And just to chime in here, this is the uh, development portal. So there may be things that are a little bit different. Than Correct. Correct. Yeah, if you were to access our portal today, it'll look slightly different. Um, one of the main differences we did was we moved um, basically the simulation output to this bottom right. And I think I forgot to mention this on the last example. Um, but basically, when you simulate, it's going to calculate your reward scale. So at this location, we get a reward scale of one. Obviously, it's in the suburbs. It's not very dense. Um, but I'm going to show another example in a little bit where the reward scale is going to be much lower. Um, so this is an example of basically the coverage we're able to get. Um, this location obviously is a high gain antenna and we're able to get it kind of above the roof lines, but there's still a fair amount of trees, so it's not going too far. Um, but if we look back at our um, obviously example here, it's able to hit all of these hotspots in Pleasanton, um, basically down here. Um, it doesn't show that it can hit this one. If we actually change this to 25 feet, I believe it does um, when I did examples in the past. Um, and I'm not sure what's going on with this one. Obviously, there's, like I said, there's always going to be some outliers in RF data. This one's super far away. I'm not sure if they have a super high gain antenna on top of a mountain or whatnot. 
And then these lines over here are actually going over to Modesto, which we all know is not, <laughs> <laughs> not really legitimate coverage. Not, not sure where they have those set up, but my hotspot's somehow able to hit them um, 50 miles away in Modesto. So uh, that makes sense. Um, let's do another example. This one's in downtown San Diego. It's where I'm currently located and live. Um, so Digital Bronze Panther. We're able to search the hotspot name. So this one's pretty much in the heart of downtown San Diego. Obviously, it's kind of an urban sprawl. There's buildings as tall as 40, 50 feet, kind of like downtown SF. I guess the buildings aren't quite as tall. So we're definitely going to be clicking urban for this one. Um, it's in a third or fourth floor apartment. I'm going to put 35 feet for the height. Um, the antenna gain, this is just a stock rack antenna. We're going to do, actually, I believe it was a helium hotspot, as you can see here in this picture. Um, what's the helium hotspot? 1.3, 1.8? Let me add some more. Blanking off the top of my head. 1.2. So 1.2 dBi antenna. Um, obviously, you can adjust the frequency for different locations. Uh, we're going to leave that the same. And we're going to put zero cable loss um, because it is obviously connected directly to the unit. Um, so we're going to go ahead and simulate that location in downtown San Diego. While that loads, I guess we can go ahead and pull this up. So basically it's able to hit um, a fair amount of the ones downtown, but as we can see, the, the service is not able to get out of downtown, which has been fairly, fairly in line with what I've been seeing. I have a fair amount set up in downtown. Um, and basically if you're kind of in that urban sprawl and you're not above the, above the skyline or above the, um, the buildings, you're not really gonna get out of the city. Um, so going back to our portal, it should have almost loaded. And once this has been generated, Aiden, uh, you can recall these overlays uh, without re regenerating every time, right? Correct. So each generation basically costs a credit. Um, currently, we're giving out 10 credits for free um, for anyone that signs up before April 14th. Our plan is to try to give some kind of free credits um, away no matter what. Again, we want to keep this free for the hobbyist user to be able to check their location. Um, but we are going to build out a history function. Um, so we, we do actually have a history function. It's got a bug right now. Um, it should be fixed in the next couple of days. Um, but basically, we do have a history function that will show you basically your past calls, and you'll be able to view them um, for free without using another credit. Um, but again, there is a bug in that currently. I'm going to have to go back and regenerate this one. Sorry, I believe. Does it stop the loading if we switch tabs, James? Yeah, so when it's okay. removed from focus, it does uh, pause the loading. OK, we, we need to fix that. But but I noticed that you can also pull this down in KMLs. And so you can pull this data into uh, like the overlay into Google Earth. Yeah, I can, I can demo that too really quickly. If you like. cool. um, so this was basically the example, as we can see here, pretty, pretty accurate. Once again, obviously it's not able to hit these, some of these closer hotspots uh, just because they're in that red um, zone. We can see here basically those black hexes. Um, as you can see here, it's not able to hit these kind of outer ones. Um, I don't know if it's too small in Zoom for you guys to see this, but again, it's not really hitting those outer ones, but it is hitting a good majority of the ones that are in um, this purple coverage zone and blue coverage zone. Um, so that's kind of an example of the urban one. Uh, and so real quick, yeah. uh, the reward scale was 0. 0.33 there? Oh yeah, I, sorry, I keep kind of glossing over that. So it does calculate the reward scale here, um, which I, I think is one of the cool selling points for sure. Um, so every time you basically generate the RF data, it's also going to be calculating the reward scale. Um, which will be shown here. In the future, we oh. hope to also add metrics like how many hotspots you're hitting. Um, so it'll give you, you know, for so this example, it'd be like, oh, you're hitting, you know, 20 hotspots. Um, and again, we're going to add another layer on top of that, which is kind of a location scoring metric, um, which will basically give you a good estimate of how many, how many hotspots you're hitting. Oh. Um, and then we're also going to work in like HIP 15 and HIP 17 factors based on basically what their award scale is um, and basically calculating kind of the earning potential of the location. So I would have to go ahead and input every hotspot location if I had a list. Yeah. So, if, so um, if you're if you're me, I'm going through my CRM. Um, obviously, I get you know my leads from my Facebook ads and whatnot. Going through my CRM, I'd be coming in, typing in their address here. Um, you know, looking at it. Um, I, and when people become a lead in my system, I ask them like, is this a one-story house, two-story house? You know, are you on the 15th yeah. floor of a building? That kind of stuff. Yeah. Enter all those variables in. Um, and then you would basically be able to generate this and say like, okay, this guy's getting a hotspot or nope, sorry, this is not a good location. Um, so yeah. And to further jump in there, we do hope to have the ability to upload like a Excel file and it will go ahead and just, you know, knock out those addresses or those potential leads and report back a, a score for you. So that way you don't have to manually go through and enter every individual address. Correct. 
because I may have some, yeah. So usually when I get them in, I they come in bunches, right? So yep, it would just be able to good to. Yeah, absolutely. We, we've considered, uh, yeah, either having some kind of bulk upload or potentially releasing an API as well. If you want yeah, to just kind of like CRM integration that would then, you know, just link it, link that the, would score, be perfect, the, score, the score directly into your CRM. That, that's something that's definitely on our roadmap and something that's potentially oh, be a, couple, awesome. couple, a couple of weeks to a month or two out. Um, any other questions? I can demo that KMZ file we talked about. Um, I do have one more. Do you guys want to see one more demo? This one's from a skyscraper in downtown. Go for it. Yeah, I'd love to. Let's see. And, and question about the skyscrapers, because yeah. um, a lot of times you'll have like solar um, coating on the windows. Correct. Uh, how, how is the antenna uh, located on this? Yep. Yeah. So here's a picture. Oh, okay. Uh, this is actually, <laughs> this is actually, yeah, this is actually an old picture. I have downgraded it to just the stock rack antenna. Um, for whatever reason, I found that I was getting better results and better earnings. Not sure if the brand of antenna I bought just wasn't the best or... Um, yeah, I wasn't sure what was going on there, but I actually did downgrade this just to a normal um, rack antenna. Uh, but this is basically the location. This is actually my apartment building um, where I'm streaming to you guys from right now. Um, so here to the right, we can see basically the hotspots it's able to hit. Um, so I know these belong to a guy named Paleo Treats Nick down in San Diego. He's a pretty big. I think he set up these, these massive solar powered, at least this one is, I believe, massive solar powered, like 12 DVI antennas up on the top of the mountains. Um, but yeah, so this is basically all the hotspots it's able to witness. Um, so if we go into the tool, helpful search, search recent mole, I went and selected it. Um, so for this one, it's a rack hotspot, so 2.3 dBi. Um, we can put zero for the cable loss. It's like, here we can put one or two. It's a pretty short run. Um, the height, so the height, I'm on the 21st floor. I like to account for about 12 feet. 252 feet, sure, um, 252 feet. Um, and then again, we're in the, an urban area. You could also click clear line of sight um, because obviously it does have a pretty clear line of sight. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and click urban um, just because we are so tall that it is able to basically get over um, kind of that urban clutter. And as you can see here, um, it gets some pretty pretty damn good coverage. Um, obviously we're pretty high up here um, and it's got a clear line of sight to most of the surrounding areas. Um, so if we kind of go back and look at this map, we're able to hit um, hotspots as far up as La Jolla, Pacific Beach, um, all kind of all throughout, down, you know, El Cajon, North Park. I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with San Diego, um, but it tends to be fairly accurate. It's hitting all those hotspots down here as well. Um, so in my experience, kind of modeling all of my different hotspots, um, it's, it's been working pretty well. And I look forward to getting my next batch and being able to utilize this to place them. And so question about this right here, uh, where we see the blockage um, to the west, is this because of, of urban buildup uh, between you and uh, blockage? Are you talking about like right here? No, I, I'm just talking about if you look out um, out to the west, how we have these two rays coming out, but um, yeah, but block so the, in the middle. So these rays here, so these rays here are RF coverage. The block in the middle, there's a mountain range here. Okay, uh, and so that's the topo that is being calculated and and saying, hey, there's a mountain there. So right? yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. It's a top topography, the geography that's basically blocking the signal. Um, so it takes into account um, all the geography. Um, it does not take into account uh, basically real-time buildings at the moment. We do hope to factor that in soon. Um, gotcha. Instead, we're basically using um, this terrain modeling, which is why this, this setting and height specifically are extremely important um, that you get those right and kind of read through the setting documentation. Um, but again, I found it to be very accurate um, for basically using the, the random clutter modeling that we are. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, like I said, there's some cool map options, you know, light, dark streets, satellite, all that kind of stuff, nothing fancy. Um, you can basically overlay the hexes if that's of interest to you, um, all that kind of stuff. And then you can go and manually set latitude and longitude um, if that's of interest to you. Um, so that's pretty much it for the portal. I'm gonna demo basically the KMZ um, file that we talked about really quickly. Let me open my Google Earth Pro. Um, it's a pretty cool feature if you really wanna get in there and kind of play with it in 3D. And this can uh, let you see the 3D uh, buildings that aren't necessarily calculated directly in, in into this. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, one side note as well, if you right click, you can um, kind of pivot this as well, uh, which can be useful in some situations. Um, but let's go ahead and open Google Earth. So this is how I used to place hotspots. I've got my uh, KML files here <laughs> of all the hotspots. Let me go ahead and tick those off for this example. So we download the KMZ file, we can quickly, we just click it once and bam, we have it now in Google Earth. Um, so this allows you to really kind of zoom in, check it out. Um, you can obviously see the buildings in 3D. 
Google Earth Pro is a really cool tool if you haven't played around with it. I was pretty shocked when I first started playing with it. Um, and yeah, definitely a cool way to basically explore the coverage that you should be getting. Now, is this paid website or is it uh, free? So Hotspot RF um, is a freemium website. We offer a lot of the features for free. Um, the radio frequency settings and the reward calculation um, and soon the rewards, the location scoring um, is a paid feature. Um, right now we're offering, like I said, basically 10 free credits for you to go check 10 locations. Um, and in the future, we do ha hope to keep some kind of, um, you know, free credits for the average hobbyist that wants to check a location or two. Um, but if you are checking, you know, tens or hundreds of locations, um, it is going to be a paid product. So what product do you use? Do you use Atoll for prediction or? Sorry, what's the, what's the question? What kind of simulation are you using? Monte Carlo simulation? What kind of simulation are, are you using? using? Um, is it ITM, Longley Rice um, modeling? Okay. Um, we use that for our model, um, our simulation. I know because the race that you have is the water, which I know tend to go very far on the yeah. sea. Yeah, so the signal is very um, able to travel, you know, very easily over the water. Um, obviously, if we were to place a hotspot out here and similar to the location, we're going to see a pretty nice, perfect little circle of coverage like that, which is interesting to play with. <laughs> Any other questions? No, would love to try it out. I mean, I use the simulation like the Atoll in the telecom world for AT&T and uh, asset for T-Mobile for seeing the coverage of the inside. But well, what also has to be factored in is also the antenna. When it comes to cellular you know, towers, they're not only high up in the air, but it's also a different frequency, especially right. whichever you know generation you're talking about when it comes to that particular cell tower. Um, and you know, it's just a completely different animal in some aspect. Yes. See, the, I mean, I just don't want to waste anybody's time, just in a nutshell. Most of the time, like people in LA and New York City, the height, they want to as slow as possible in telecom. The main reason is it's not the coverage, it's the capacity. Sure. They are more limited with the capacity than the coverage. So they don't want more than 0.1 mile of the coverage at all. The one person was saying the height is the major one. I said, it's not about the height. It's also the coverage. And the, what is the aim of the site? Is it coverage versus capacity? Oh, so you're speaking, uh, you're mostly talking about the antenna then. Yes. I, think it's, I think you're okay. talking about helium coverage in general. Um, so, so the helium network's um, basically, basically built for IoT devices. Um, it tends, tends to be much lower capacity type of devices that are sending really small packets. Um, so being close to a cell tower, you know, it's not as important as having um, full coverage, uh, if that answers your question. And I'm understanding correctly. And line of sight is king. Yes. This is very cool. I like this, man. Awesome. Thank you, Travis. Uh, anyone else have any other questions for me before I uh, stop sharing my screen? Yeah, I got a quick one for you, Aiden. Um, yeah. I, uh, I used to actually live in downtown Gaslamp. So like 10 years ago, I, uh, I missed the fish tacos. <laughs> Awesome. I love it. Taco Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I was curious if there's any plans to let users save uh, a simulated location in their profile or something so they can revisit it without having to. I'm guessing downloading the KMZ is your recommended way of saving that result. Yeah, I brushed over this quickly. We actually do have a history. Um, so you can oh, go okay. Back. Cool. Yeah, so you can go that. back. Um, like I said, there's, a, there's some bugs in the history right now. We're going to be fixing it up in the next week or so. Um, so don't uh, rely on that just yet. Um, but we do have a history where you can go and basically it'll show the address here and you can go back and um, view those individual simulations um, for free. Um, and it also has basically unique link sharing uh, where you can send this link to, you know, if you have employees or, you know, multiple people on your team, you could send them this link and they would basically be able to load it up and they would be able to see that um, prediction without, you know, using another credit or reloading it again. Awesome. Thanks. I missed that part. Thanks. No worries. So how much is paid version and then what all you can do in the paid version? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's probably something I should definitely go over. Um, so if you load it up, we have pricing on our website. Um, basically, it starts at around a dollar per credit. Um, and they, there are some rewards as you purchase more in volume. Um, we also basically offer custom plans if you're looking at, you know, placing hundreds of hotspots. 
we found that it takes roughly around five credits per hotspot placed. Um, sometimes more, sometimes less. It really depends how good you are getting leads in good locations. Um, obviously, if you've nailed your marketing and you're getting people living up on hills or skyscrapers constantly, then you're only going to need one credit. <laughs> you might not even need credits if you're just getting skyscrapers all the time. But um, yeah, so basically it costs around a dollar per credit and there are discounts as you buy more. Can we pay in HNT? <laughs> unfortunately, un unfortunately not. I'm sorry. Um, because it is a subscription product, it is kind of difficult to bill in HNT. I know that that is kind of the, the cult of HNT. All the products seem to accept HNT, uh, but we're just doing credit cards at the moment. Uh, it's also kind of an accounting nightmare, um, trying to account for all that stuff on top of my earnings and soon to be my staking and <laughs> all of that. So there sticking, we go. sticking with dollars at the moment <laughs> for tax purposes mainly. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, you can find me on Discord in my last slide. Um, oh, sorry. I guess the benefit, obviously, um, I think it's pretty clear to everyone in this call, but helps remove the guesswork. It systematizes the process. So instead, you could, you know, hire someone pretty quickly and say, you know, plug these addresses in. If it looks like a good address, you know, let's get in contact with them, start the sales process, get them, get your hotspot placed. Um, obviously, it's going to help you increase your ROI. Um, less recalled hotspots, that's huge, you know, the overhead and dealing with people having to return their hotspots and those, um, those conversations aren't fun to have um, is obviously um, extremely important. Um, it saves time, obviously. Um, and really ROI, I think uh, these hotspots are obviously not easy to get your hands on, making sure they're in the right locations, providing, you know, the, uh, enough a lot of coverage and obviously earning a lot of H&T um, is critical, uh, which is why I think our pricing plans are pretty fair compared to, you know, this can help you increase your earnings by 10, 20% on a hundred hotspots that, that could be, you know, a massive, a massive. Yeah. And that's something people need to understand here because um, if you place a hotspot in a bad location, then I, I mean, the difference between using this tool and, and getting it in a better place is going to pay for it in a day. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I mean, at current rates, <laughs> yes, in a day. We, 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 we don't talk fiat on this call. I mean, yep. you know, um, every, everything is just tokens, but I mean, when it, when it comes down to reality, um, you know, using this tool, regardless of the pricing, the pricing model seems very fair uh, from what I've seen here. Uh, Quick question. Now, when let's say if I have that 10 credits or purchase it and I have my location at this point and I do analysis today, my device may become by July because of the back order. Uh -huh. By the July, there might like, be a lot more devices around me. So when I say that one coverage, my address, is that a one point I can use it? Um, I see what you're saying. James, will the hotspots update in between histories? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So I would definitely recommend once you get the hotspot, loading up the tool and running it. Um, not only because you just don't want to go on old data, but real-time data is more accurate. Uh, we, you know, keep the hotspots updated, you know, daily, hoping to move that to every hour. But just the having the right data is better than, you know, having the, the wrong data so or old data. That should that count it as a two unit or one, as a one? Uh... Well, it's a complete rerun on all your API calls. I mean, right? What do you mean? Uh, correct. So it would be yeah. another call. If you're going to be running it, you know, today, and then in July, you're going to be running it again. Uh, of course, that would be another credit deduction. It would be cool if I could say, I've got this one site that I want to be uh, kept up to date on and just say, look, I understand I'm going to be paying credits on it, but I'd like yep. this to be um, we've, we've, updated we've, automatically. Yeah. We've actually considered that as well. That'd be kind of cool. Because obviously you might yeah. get a great lead that's in you know the middle of nowhere. Um, right. But suddenly, you know, more hotspots might pop up and hey, suddenly this is a good location. Exactly. Um, so we've, we've considered that where you could, you know, check it weekly or check it monthly um, and even uploading a list and just kind of, you know, you could see the yeah. top the top scores to move, move to the top of the list kind of thing. Um, so like that's that. another direction we could potentially go in the future. Um, one last thing, we've had this request a lot. Um, we are going to be building out basically a panel here that will show your history um, and you'll be able to go through and check the different locate different um, histories you want to show at once and you'll be able to actually model multiple at the same time nice. um, so you could have you know a location here location here and that's a little bit more kind of enterprise or if you know you got a bunch of leads in an area that's not covered yet you could load them all up and say like oh wow you know this this area over here suddenly you know i have 
10 leads in here and I could go set up my own little network and really get the people's network over here. Um, and obviously set up a nice little HMT. Um, Very farm. nice. Yeah. If you can toggle over a uh, planner mode, just to yep. take a look. So this is basically a planner mode switches you into um, dark mode. And then you just, the idea is that you can click and then it builds your map and you click build, but we're going to be moving more to like using your history in order to like uh, tick the ones that you want and then click build. But that's essentially what the planner mode is for. Exactly. Is there any uh, expected date for the planner mode to be rolled out? Um, we don't have an exact launch date yet. Um, we got a couple little bugs that popped up in launch. Um, it's working for the majority of users, but something like five or 10% have been having some issues with different browsers and that kind of stuff. So we're gonna focus on getting those solved first. Um, and then I think kind of getting the history working again was the one other little bug that we got to fix. Um, and then once history is up and live, we can start looking into overlaying uh, multiple simulations at once. Um, so so more than likely in the next like week or two, um, <laughs> a form of planner mode should be readily available. Nice. Nice, nice. I know that um, a few people were having 503 error codes earlier. Um, has that been resolved yet or... Is that something that's in the process? James, you want to fix one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so with the 503, it's currently uh, being worked out right now. Um, definitely going to be having it either fixed, you know, by Monday or hopefully sooner. Um, if you're running into that issue, uh, we've noticed unironically using Edge has solved it or going into <laughs> Incognito has solved it. But it definitely is a number one priority to get that resolved. Yeah, we found that it's um, a caching issue and some web browsers are throwing it as well. Um, so either clear your cache or try Cognito. Um, and it sounds like Edge is working really well for it as well. Is it um, just a subscription-based model or can we buy like a pack of um, it is It is just subscription-based, um, but you can obviously sign up and cancel right away if you just wanted to do a pack um, for a one-off. Thank you. Can you explain the rewards? Um, what part of it? Like, how does it work? What's it based on? So reward scale is based on- If it says on, 1.0, what does that mean? Yeah, so reward scale is based on the Helium blockchain. Um, so we don't we don't actually, um, you know, give out these rewards. We just help you predict uh, what your reward scale is going to be. Um, so basically every um, hotspot on the blockchain has a reward scale um, assigned to it. So this one, it's green. It's on the middle of nowhere. Obviously, it's going to be a 1.0. That means it's basically getting- 100% of the rewards um, for beaconing. And when people pick up its, um, when it people people pick up its beacon, they're also gonna get 100%. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure I understand this correctly, Travis. And then basically, if you have a score lower than one, so this person is a reward scale of 0.5 here, when they beacon, they're gonna get 50% of the rewards that they should be receiving for beaconing. Um, and when other people pick up their beacon, they're also gonna get less um, rewards. Um, so actually, you could have a low reward scale um, and still, in theory, earn quite a bit of HMT. And I have I have some of my hotspots that are doing that. Yeah. Um, it's really about being able to witness um, locations with high reward scales. That that's your best bet for success. And Aiden, this also ties into um, the hex or the Uber um, hex grid. Correct. Um, uh, as far as the rewards are distributed, and I believe you can just yeah, exactly. So you can select what uh, what level you're wanting to uh, display your hexes at. Yep, absolutely. You can do a res six and eight. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, not six, 10, apologies. Eight so five. you'll notice that the dots, they're in their own little hexagon or honeycomb. And the more that are in that honeycomb, the scale is lower. So I think it's, and again, just feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but it's about four. Once it's four in that honeycomb, then the scale significantly do right. It, it's variable depending on how many hotspots are in surrounding honeycomb. It's a pretty complex formula. I don't think it's worth getting into. It's not really the point of the presentation. If you uh, want to see more about it, I've just linked the GitHub um, hit 17 right. in the chat. Yeah, right. I, I don't think we have time to go into that. That's a whole nother hour. Well, well of, of course, but but that's the, that's the correct approach. Uh, thank you, AP. Yeah, the general gist. Awesome. I think that about wraps it up. Anyone else have any last question, any questions? Nah, sounds good, man. Thank you for the presentation. Yep, I appreciate you guys listening. I hope you all check out my products. 
Yeah, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for presenting. Uh, this is very cool. And I hope everyone can uh, kind of jump on here and at least what you said, uh, 10 free credits uh, yeah. up until what date? Uh, yeah, we're offering 10 free credits up until April 15th. Okay. Um, and then at some point, I think we are going to dial it back to a few less free credits, uh, but we did just want to kind of get it out there, um, especially since it's still in beta and there's a couple little bugs. Wanted to give some people some extra to play around with. Sure. Well, good deal. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. Awesome. And, uh, Thank you, Travis. Yeah. Um, and uh, you also have a channel over on the um, Helium Discord. If anyone wants to um, continue a conversation or has questions. Um, yeah, definitely. We do have a channel um, in the Discord. Again, we, we're active. I'm sure as many of you as you know, we have been supportive in that aspect. But hey, feel free to, you know, feedback, comments, concerns. I really like the idea of, you know, um, being able to notify someone if more hotspots are in the area. So feedback like that, absolutely great. So we can add it to the roadmap and go ahead and build it out to just help you guys be able to place the hotspots, you know, and remove the guesswork really. Yeah. Sure. The only suggestion I have is for people because we can get the coverage now and provide one time free V analysis when they're ready to deploy. That's the only disadvantage I see. You might have to pay two times for the same analysis. Okay, right. thank you. Yeah. Uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, uh, generally, I guess uh, most people would probably be modeling it you know, shortly before they send it out, but I, I can see that um, in some use cases, that would definitely be important. Like for me, it's coming in July. I mean, May 1 and then July 2nd batch. And and I, I don't mean to you know cause conflict here, but I mean, I mean, for one run, on your, on your API, I mean, what does that really cost you? I mean, when you're talking about, you know, going out and, you know, waiting weeks or months for a hotspot to come in, getting your antennas in, getting everything, getting up on a rooftop, you know, doing an install. I mean, I, I, I think relatively it's, it's negligible. Um, I, I mean, I mean, what the service costs, I mean, I, I think what they're providing is, is pretty solid, man. Um, Thank you. My, my, my two cents. I don't know. Um, absolutely right. It's like yeah, I agree. It's not a lot, especially the amount of helium today's price. It's not a lot. I agree. You go onto a rooftop in Texas in the middle of the summer. Um, yeah, that that that's where your pain points are. Um, oh, weight loss program. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think the main thing is it just it solves the problem of having to use four or five tools to figure out whether or not you may or may not get coverage. And it just makes life simpler for people to get hotspots into the right places. Uh, thank yeah, you. I'm, I'm glad that came across because that was the problem I had. Um, and our goal is to be, become, you know, the one website that you need to use and there, nothing else. That, that is our goal. Yeah. I'm sure. And Aiden, using... yeah. Uh, you made that clear, I believe, because I, I think anyone who has been, you know, going down this path has done the Google Earth. They have done the uh, the radio mobile. Um, you know, they have done cloud RF. They, you know, they realize that you have to go between all of these different APIs, all of these different sites. You've got to have, you know, spreadsheets and, you know, um, it, it it's very time consuming. And if I can just go in and just say, look, what does this place look like? And it tells me. I mean, oh, yeah, that, that's worth that's worth the cost that you're asking for it. I mean, yeah, one tool to the edit. and on top of that, it, it saves you money because I mean, I signed up with Cloud RF, and yeah. that was a pain in itself just to use. And this this brings simplicity and and just everything. Like I honestly, when I saw the price plan, I was surprised that it was that cheap. Thank you. It's good to hear. Yeah. What's our distort channel? Uh, it's in the Helium channel. It's under Community Apps. It's called Hotspot RF. I appreciate it. You're always welcome on Helium Hacks, man. If you want to come around and uh, talk about something else, talk about another project, talk about something you're building, uh, drop in, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, when a uh, pl uh, planner mode comes available, perhaps we can jump on in here and, you know, just uh, do a quick run through on that. And That'd be um, great. yeah. Sounds good. I appreciate you presenting and I, I wish you the best of luck uh, with your endeavor here. It's very Thank cool, you. man.
Appreciate the community it, needs it. I really appreciate that. And um, if you want to contact us by email, hello at um, hotspotrf.com or again, Discord. Um, we're readily available if you need us. Rock and roll. Thanks, guys.